Does a difference of one horsepower really matter? What is it going to get you between a 38 horse versus a 39 horse? We're going to answer that today. And you've heard me say it before, but I really think that horsepower is overrated. And that does not mean it's not important. It's just that it's not the first thing that you should look at. Because these machines here, okay, the two outside ones are going to be a 30, 39 hour, part of the three series family of tractors from John Deere. The middle unit there is going to be a John Deere 20, 38 hour, part of the two series family. Okay, so a one horsepower nominal difference there, but I'm telling you, it's night and day on their capabilities. So here's the reason that I think it's overrated, because I'm oftentimes told I need a 30 horsepower tractor, I need a 40 horsepower tractor just some nominal uh, horsepower rating and it's very deceiving because a horsepower can come in different frame sizes different capabilities completely different configurations and so I need to know a lot more to be able to identify the proper tractor for you to fit your needs so these guys right here are going to be some beautiful clean low hour examples of tractors that you can purchase from Goodworks tractors happy to sell you a tractor or an attachment make sure you check out the other videos on the channel if you are shopping if you like what you see, consider subscribing below as well and read through the description. There's a lot of helpful links down there for all you tractor lovers. And on a real quick note, we do have Rosie on uh, quite a few medications right now. We've been tweaking them and, and trying to get the right combination there uh, to deal with the Lyme's disease and the, the IMPA that she has going on. So she does seem to be improving over the last week or so with the new um, medication regimen that we're on right now. But uh, she still has a ways to go. But thanks for everybody that's been reaching out and uh, sending their well wishes. And we really appreciate it. All right, guys, so I've broken this up into a few separate categories here, and I'll probably bounce around a little bit and maybe catch some things as we're doing a little bit of a walk around as well. But general categories here are going to be kind of the capabilities between you know, like loaders and that kind of thing and specs like the weight, dimensions, whatnot. Standard features that you're going to find on both the 2 Series and the 3R Series. Uh, options that are available. There's going to be different options that you can get on either one. Pricing and then uh, maybe general uses that you would steer towards one uh, model or one frame size versus another. Let's start off with the capabilities and the specs here. Okay, so weight, uh, we're just going to talk base weight of the tractor. Okay, so if you're not, if there's no loader on there, if there's no mower deck, no cab, no backhoe, anything like that, we're going to be talking about a 2,400 pound base weight for the 2038R here. Okay, again, this is a 38 horsepower nominal, you know, it might be 37 point something, um, the specific horsepower, but we're just going to round numbers here, it makes things easier. So 2,400 pounds base weight versus 2,900 pounds uh, base weight for the 3R series. So right here with the loaders, there's going to be a huge difference between the 2R and the 3R, okay? So let's talk about the height that they'll lift. On the 2R right here, you're going to lift 85 inches high, okay, versus 102 inches high with the, uh, the best of the two loaders. There's two loader options actually for the 3R, so that makes it a little bit more confusing. But we're going to talk about the best one that you can get, which is the H165 on the older version and then the 320R on a, on a newer version of the, the 3R series. Now loader capacity, you're going to be about 1,100 pounds to full height here versus about 1,600 pounds to full height. So you're reaching a lot higher. What is that, about 17 inches higher with the 3R, and you're gonna lift about, oh, 500 pounds more, right around there. Okay, now onto the three-point, a very significant difference again, all right? So on the three-point hitch on the 2R over here, about 1,350 pounds, you're darn near double that, 2,500 pounds over here on the 3R. That's a big difference. And again, keep in mind, all of these things are pertaining to a tractor that is one horsepower different. So that is why I want to put it in that frame of reference there, because horsepower doesn't really tell the story, because there are so many other influences and factors that go into determining the right tractor for you, that horsepower really should be quite a ways down on the list, and then help those other requirements determine that horsepower that you need. Let's go over a few other dimensions as well, okay? So tires, uh, you're going to have 14 by 17.5 versus 15 by 19.5 over here. Basically a 36 inch tall tire versus a 39 inch tall tire. Now there are two different tire uh, size options in the R4s for the 3R series, but the 15 by 19.5 is going to be the most common size that you see. Now length, okay, wheelbase here, which is center of the front axle to center of the rear axle. You're essentially, you're within an inch, it's even closer than that, I think, but basically 68 inches for either one, so no length difference really there at all. However, the width from outside of tire to outside of tire, you're going to have about 55 inches on the 2R and about 58 inches on the 3R. And now these can come in different configurations. The wheels uh, can be reversible, so they can be offset basically, so you can narrow it up or widen it out a little bit. So that could change the width of the machine. 
And one other thing to think about is that both of these are gonna have a regen system in there. Anything that's essentially above 26 horsepower anymore is gonna require that regen system to get to tier four emissions compliance. So there's no death you know, treatment in here. You don't have to put any of that diesel exhaust fluid in any kind of a tank anywhere on here like you would in the truck. It's simply gonna be a rather passive system that turns on uh, periodically, typically 40 to 100 hours, anywhere within that range. Um, depending on how you're using it. So if you're using it at high RPMs more frequently, it's gonna regenerate less, less frequently. And you can still use the machines while they're going through that regen process. It's just gonna prompt you to go above 1500 RPMs minimum. Okay, let's talk about price really quickly here. And I'm not gonna give you exact prices of these machines because they do vary all the time, depending on the exact configuration, you know, the exact setup, if it's new, used, the region that you're in in the country. However, let's just talk about a base configuration here with a loader and a mower deck on a 2038R versus a 3039R. You're gonna see typically around an $8,000 price difference. It could fluctuate. You might see it at 7,000, you might see it at 9,000, but 8,000 is gonna be a good general point of reference. Keep in mind there are different mower deck sizes, there are different loader options on the 3R series of tractors as well. So even those kinds of nuances right there are gonna change pricing. It's very important when you're pricing things out to understand the exact features that are gonna be on a tractor because there's a standard, a base configuration, and then there's totally customizable options depending on what you wanna have on there or the different loader, mower, single point connection, different hydraulic options, all that kind of stuff that's gonna dram dramatically affect the pricing. Hey, really quick here, one of the most popular tractor attachments out there are gonna be something like this hunk of steel right here. This is called a quick hitch. It goes on the back of your three-point hitch, stays on there essentially all the time, makes hooking up, attaching and detaching to other attachments, whether it's a brush hog, uh, a ballast box, a snowblower, a rear blade, whatever you might put on here, it makes it that much easier. All these points right here just connect at the same time, and it just takes a lot of the headache out of having to wrestle with each individual arm, okay? So go to goodworkstractors.com. There's several different versions available. This version right here, I do have a limited quantity at this time. You know, depending on when you're watching this video, I may or may not have these. These may be in black, they may be in red, but I'm telling you, these ones right here are an awesome option because they don't require additional bushings uh, for every attachment that you hook up. So go to Goodworks Tractors, check them out. Hey, and while you're at it, if you haven't done so yet and you like what you see here, consider hitting that subscribe button below. Yeah, it's just right underneath the video. Hit subscribe. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about options for these tractors here. And hey, if you see the sun looks a little bit different, a little bit different lighting. <laughs> I started shooting this video in the morning, got a lot of stuff going on through the day. Finally, here we are in the evening wrapping up the video. So apologize for the lighting change there. We're gonna go ahead and talk about loader options between the two here. We'll talk about your belly mowers. We'll talk about your backhoes, calves, maybe even snow blowers, that kind of thing too, okay? So on the two series, we touched on this already. There's gonna be one loader option. It's a 220R loader that you see equipped on here. They are gonna be a quick park loader that's on there. Okay, quick attach bucket as well. You can see I've got the brush crusher grapple on here. These things are a big hit, by the way. If you don't have a third function uh, control, which most tractors are not going to, you will see, if you can see it here, there is actually a third function on this one, but I'm just highlighting that product right there. A very good option for you. Go to goodworkstractors.com. You'll see more information on that. Um, on the three series here, the three R's, you're gonna see two options of loaders, okay? So you have a base loader, which is gonna lift um, less weight to a lower height, and then you have the, the better of the two options, the H165 or the 320R, as we discussed, which are going to lift more weight to a higher um, height as well, okay? So moving on to the belly mowers, you are gonna have both a 60 inch and a 72 inch option for both the 2R and the 3R series, okay? So one important note, on the 2R, the mid-PTO is gonna be standard. It's gonna come on every tractor. You can't get a 2R tractor without the mid-PTO. On the 3R, however, you're gonna see a lot of them that don't have that mid-PTO option. So if you're looking to put a belly mower on and you say are in the used market, you know, buying uh, a used 3R tractor, you either wanna make sure you have that mid-PTO option on there or at least plan for that cost. It can actually be field added, field addable. It's one of the few series of tractors that are out there where you can actually add the mid-PTO on. Okay, moving on to the backside here. This is a backhoe, obviously, right here. There are gonna be two options, the 375A and the 385A for the 3R series of tractor. Again, you can add this on. When you add a backhoe on, you also have to add on power beyond hydraulics. That's gonna be different than a third function or a fourth and a fifth kit. Um, it's, it's totally separate. So uh, that's a different type of, type of hydraulics on there. I've done a whole video explaining the different hydraulics. I don't wanna get into that now. So two options for the backhoes on the 3R, only one option for a backhoe on the 2R. And of course, this backhoe here is gonna dig uh, deeper. It's gonna have more breakout force, digging power, that kind of thing as well. 
What I included over here on this 3039R, you're going to see a factory cab. This thing is beautiful. It does have the tinted windows on here. Okay, this is integrated, built right at the factory. You can't just go ahead and pop this thing off. The doors don't really easily come off. It's air conditioned. It's uh, heated. It's got the front wipers, rear wipers, all sorts of options in this thing too. But you cannot get a factory cab on the 2R series. All you can get is an aftermarket cab. It's going to have heat available, but it's not going to be integrated into the design of the, the tractor itself. Um, this is going to be something that kind of fits right on here, okay, not built into it. It's just going to slap on there. Doors will come off, that way you can get some circulation in the summertime, but it is not going to be a, a true factory cab. Okay, so this 59-inch snowblower here is actually for a John Deere 2032R, same family as the 2038R that we're looking at in this video. This same snowblower will actually also fit on the 3R series of tractors as well. So one important note, we talked about the mid PTO being a requirement for the belly mower. Same thing can be said to run a front mount snowblower. So a lot of those 3R tractors are not gonna have the mid PTO option. Be aware of that. If you wanna run a snowblower, you gotta make sure you get one that has a mid PTO or at least plan for that cost down the road. There's a long PTO shaft where these things tie into that mid PTO and that's what's gonna drive the augers here. Okay, so besides everything that kind of goes along with the cabs here, there's some other options that are not available on the 2R, only on the 3R. So this one has a few of those, for instance, I want to show you. One is the air ride seat here. Uh, they both do have a really nice standard suspension seat, but the air ride seat is a really nice upgrade. I used to not think it was worth it. I've really changed my mind over the years on that, and I am uh, a big fan of the air ride seat now. Something else you're going to see here, let me climb on up. You're going to see this whole little uh, plethora of controls here, all right? So... What you have here, this is going to be standard equipment, except for the very, very, very basic um, 3033R and a power reverser. I've only seen a few of those, and they were rental machines. Never seen any others that didn't have this right here. And so your top row here is going to be an automotive-style cruise control. Bottom row here is going to be your rollout um, function. So basically, you can make the tractor come to a screeching halt when you take your foot off the, uh, off the gas down there, or you can make it just gently roll out. So these functions here are gonna be like an auto throttle and then some motion match, load match, speed match, that kind of thing. Oh, and you will see this electro hydraulic third function. As far as I know, that's not available right now on the, on the 2R series, but I know the 1R series just came out with it. And if the 2R hasn't, then it will be very soon. All right, so if we take a look at some of the standard features, let's just take a real quick look here at the 2R series here. You're gonna see a two range hydro. This is not gonna be available in a gear or power shift or anything like that. Hydro is the only option. The difference being on the, uh, the 3R, you have an option to get either a power reverser or a hydro. And with any of them, you're gonna actually have um, not just a uh, low, neutral, and high, but also the medium range as well, which uh, to me is a big deal. I really like that feature. And if you've watched my channel before, that's one of the things I think John Deere screwed up when they redesigned this two series was not including that medium range. Oh, here's actually a pretty cool option. This is something that was not available when I ordered my 3046R brand new a couple of years ago. Might be an option now, I'm not really sure, but this is a single point hydraulic connection, okay? So standard, let me show you over here where you would have four hydraulic couplers that you would have to quick uh, attach. So you have, you have one, two, three, four, okay? You see those four couplers there? Well, that single point hydraulic connection takes the headache out of all of that and allows you simply to uh, push in this red button here and flip that handle and all four connections are disconnected. So I used to think that this was overrated. However, I've had some feedback from folks, you know, a lot of you older gentlemen um, who maybe find these individual connections like these right here, these Pioneer couplers to be a pain in the butt, especially the ones that are harder to access underneath here. And that totally makes sense and I get it. But really a lot of the other standard features are gonna be similar with the padded floorboards, the tilt steering, the cruise controls. You know, these do have fender mounted work lights, whereas for whatever reason, the 3R series tractors don't, unless you have um, a cab, you'll have some cab lights on there, but suspension seats, there's no armrest for whatever reason too. Another goofy thing. I don't know what John Deere does sometimes when they're thinking about this stuff, but um, right here, this is actually gonna be a mid PTO um, option, rear to mid PTO option. If, if you see a handle like that on one of these 3R tractors, then you know that this machine has the mid PTO. If you don't see this lever right here, it's not gonna be equipped with the mid PTO. Fuel fill up here on the hood for the 3R tractors, really wish and I expect that they will redesign that back into a fender over here. Whenever they do a redesign, you're going to see over here on the 2R, they are going to have that rear uh, fender uh, fuel fill. Something else John Deere should have done is put a nice telescoping uh, draft link on the 2R. I don't know why they didn't do that, just one of the screw ups. Uh, hard to see down here, but you can see these uh, telescoping draft links right here. This is going to be standard feature on the 3R series tractors. 
Okay, so now to make a decision, which way should you go, 2R or 3R? So, and there's a lot of ways you can look at this, and one, of course, is the price. So again, with that $8,000 price difference there, well, man, if you go with a 2R, that can sure uh, buy a lot of extra attachments for your machine, right? But on the other hand, perhaps you have some larger tasks, you know, some requirements with the loader. Maybe you want to move round bales, for instance, you have a horse farm or something like that, and you want to pick up those round bales with a front end loader and move them around. Well, that's not something you're really going to be able to do with the 2R tractor. Maybe just barely get them off the ground. Maybe with a three point uh, bale spear, get them off the ground, but you're not going to like go up on a trailer and pull them off and move them around. Or shoot, who knows? Maybe you're looking for something with a factory cab. You really want to have that factory cab with air conditioning in it, not just heat. You know what? You can't get that with a 2R. You're going to have to go to the 3R. But I'll tell you what, it's really hard to make a wrong decision. You know, it's nice to have more options rather than not enough. So, and sandwiched in between these, I've also done a comparison between the 2038R and the 3038E, which is a model that's really right in between the 2R and the 3R. So you have the 2R, the 3E, and the 3R. So if you haven't watched that video, I would encourage you to check it out. 2038R versus 3038E, those are both 38 horsepower tractors, so it gets a little bit more confusing even then. Hey, I'd encourage you again, check out those brush crushers on the website. Those are a great option for the folks that don't have those additional hydraulics on their machine. You can save a lot of money that way. I also offer an electric grapple. That's the same thing. No additional hydraulics required. Again, I also sell these tractors. These are all for sale right here, and inventory is rotating frequently. I can ship tractors and attachments all over the country. I do it all the time. Make sure you check out goodworkstractors.com. If you haven't done so yet, consider hitting that subscribe button below. Check out the other videos on this channel, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.